Hey, what's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. Thanks so much for watching this video. Now, I've been in the music industry quite a while now, and there's one thing I can say with certainty, and that is rock is dead. How do I know this? Well, artists and critics alike have been pronouncing the genre dead for as long as I can remember. In the 70s, disco killed rock. In the 80s, it was the hair bands. The early 90s saw the rise of hip hop, thus killing rock. Then I was told rock music died with Kurt Cobain. It then died again when NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys came on the scene. At the turn of the century, there was a glimmer of hope with bands like The Strokes and The White Stripes and The Arctic Monkeys, but sadly these groups were all just meager imitations of rock's past, proving that rock is, in fact, dead. Even today, it's hard not to buy into the notion of rock's death. If you're looking for a solid rock tune from a kick-ass rock band on Billboard's Top 40, you'll be disappointed. Plus, the band gaining the most traction right now is a group from Michigan called Greta Van Fleet, and they're pretty good, but if you think the strokes are derivative, just wait until you hear this group's debut single. But does this really mean rock is dead? And if so, why? Why aren't there any unique and original rock groups climbing the Billboard charts right now? Do you know the answer and you're yelling it at your computer screen right now? Well, please stop. YouTube doesn't work that way. Now, I might not have the answer, but I certainly have some ideas. The general assumption presently is that technology is the latest killer of rock bands. One might submit that because of new tech, the environment to create rock music isn't as prevalent as it once was. Back in my day, if you wanted to be musically creative, your only option was to grab three friends, figure out who had the biggest garage, and chill his parents, and start making noise. And it's true! This formula is what allowed many of the greatest rock bands of the mid-20th century to come into existence. But because every rebellious teenager today has a laptop, it's easier to create music on your own, in your bedroom, using a host of sounds that would otherwise not be accessible without a computer. Uptight parents everywhere should thank Apple for causing creatively minded kids to retreat to their bedrooms and experiment with multi-track recording, musical typing, and every over-the-top effect that came preloaded on that iconic polycarbonate clamshell, never fully understanding the irony of the preloaded program's namesake. But that's not to say that rock music isn't still happening in carports and bonus rooms all over the world. As many of the youngsters that helped me put this channel together will tell you, they had friends, they swear. So inevitably, they get together and jam. But because rock music is so evolved at this point, there are tons of consuming little nooks and crannies to experiment with. Even the subgenres have subgenres. The name metal alone cannot define the range of this style. Same with punk, grunge, or even glam. There are so many different ways to find a lane in rock, it's almost impossible to fit neatly into one category. But that hasn't kept 21st century bands from trying, and in some instances, succeeding. However, success in rock music doesn't look like it did 50 years ago. You'll be hard pressed to find a band riding in stretch limos and packing Madison Square Garden to the brim. Back in the 70s, labels promoted the sale of a band's LP and marketed the daylights out of big tours and merch. The edgy, innovative groups of today don't need an infrastructure like that to find success. That same technology I mentioned earlier has allowed bands to record their own tunes and distribute those songs on the web. Can they do a whole album? Sure. Might they rather record their three best songs and put those out there so they can play a few shows and see what sticks? Probably. The culture around rock music doesn't really lend itself to needing a huge record deal anymore. Most bands, if they're good, can create a cult following, partner with a smaller independent label if they want, and remain underground all while still living a comfortable life. In a lot of ways, rock is settling in similarly to jazz. At the turn of the 20th century, jazz was all the rage. Its evolution was front and center in the American ethos. From Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong all the way to Bill Evans and Miles Davis. People used to pack into venues and dance halls to see these folks. But as other hipper styles of music gained traction in the 50s and 60s, jazz continued to thrive, but became more of a specialized art form, inspiring musicians in and out of the mainstream. This allowed jazz to experiment on the edges and try things that it might not try otherwise. All while the mainstream rock musicians, many of which were jazz fans, would take a few of these elements and infuse them into the popular music of the time. I think the same trajectory is destined for rock itself, and that's not a bad thing. Freeing it from the big music label think tanks may be the greatest thing to ever happen to this genre. Now these musicians can be free to experiment without execs worrying about marketability. So to answer the question, where did the rock bands go? They didn't go anywhere, and rock certainly isn't dead, it's just adjacent to the mainstream. Occasionally popping up in the form of Arcade Fire winning album of the year, and Use Somebody by Kings of Leon getting to the number 4 spot on the Hot 100. 
As a society, we need not measure the success of a genre by its ability to sell millions of records and climb to the top of the charts. This actually may allow rock to become more diverse and more influential. It can push boundaries and inspire popular artists, and who knows, this freedom may lead to a new resurgence. And when I hop onto my preferred streaming service to listen to Rock on Tours, Joy Wave, Big Spring, The Mob Happy, Dr. Dog, or Manchester Orchestra, I'll know the rock can never die because in the 21st century, it's right where it needs to be, expanding outward on the musical edge. And because of today's technology, it's easier to find artists creating this style of music than ever before.